Well hello there, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're safe and well. In this video we're going to be talking about Hunter Field Target or HFT shooting. Let's roll the titles. So for this video we're back out on the range at uh, Cambridge HFT and Air Gun Club. We're going to talk about um, hunter field target shooting and uh, take a walk in the woods and look at some targets. Now what is HFT then? Well HFT is an outdoor air gun target sport usually carried out in a controlled environment so that we can keep things safe because safety uh, is paramount of course when shooting air guns. Here in the UK it's open to any sub-12 air gun of either 177 calibre or 22 calibre and um, any basically any air rifle or um, scope combination is usable on the course. Now the, uh, the actual rules that apply to HFT may vary slightly depending on where you shoot or in which country you're based but generally they follow similar sort of guidelines and um, I'll point out where the differences might be as we go along but one thing that uh, they all generally agree on is the type of target uh, that we shoot and here you can see I've got three examples on the bench here starting with a 15 millimeter target 25 millimeter target and a 35 millimeter target and these are called generally fall over or flop over targets because if you hit the kill zone they fall over. Now you'll see these are painted yellow with black kills that's a specification for the rules for UK HFT but you might find different colour combinations and sometimes you might find that the targets aren't painted at all but generally there's a distinctive difference between the kill zone and the faceplate. And the idea is that uh, you go around a course of usually at least 30 targets um, and try and knock each one over. Now the points will vary depending on what rules you follow. In UK HFT rules, or UK AHFT rules, you score two points for knocking the target over for just hitting the faceplate and zero points if you miss the faceplate completely we call that a donut but in other forms of HFT you might only score a point if you knock the target over and that might be one or two points as you move around the course uh, you have to assume one of three different shooting positions generally to uh, address the targets most of the targets you will shoot prone which is lying uh, belly down on the ground there are some targets that uh, you'll shoot kneeling and some targets that you'll shoot standing and those kneeling and standing targets they might be unsupported or you might be given a support to rest on such as a post or a tree again the number of uh, standing and kneeling targets that you, uh, you shoot uh, will depend on the rules and I believe that uh, in some rules you may even have seated uh, targets as well sitting on a cushion uh, much uh, similar to um, field target shooting. One thing that's generally common amongst all of the rules is that during the course of the competition after you've taken your first shot you can't make any adjustments to your rifle scope so you're shooting with preset magnification and a preset focus. What this means is that uh, some of the targets are going to be out of focus, generally the close ones and the far distant ones, uh, and some are going to be in focus, which is going to uh, obviously affect how you shoot the target. The main uh, point with HFT then is using the Mark I eyeball and uh, other tips and techniques to try and assess the range 
of the target that you're addressing and determine the appropriate aim point for knocking that target over and also assessing any wind that may be acting upon your pellet uh, pushing it off course so you might have to aim off to the left or right of a target in order to hit it as well so that's where the skill uh, the skill become, uh, is involved now what will usually happen on a competition day is that you'd arrive at the shooting ground and you'd go and book in and uh, when you book in you'll be given a scorecard and you'll be told what your starting peg for the competition is so we don't we don't all start at peg one and then follow it round. You may start on, say for example, you may start on peg 10 and therefore you will finish on peg nine so that everybody can start at the same time. Once you've booked in and you've paid your, um, your, your fee, your uh, entry fee, you can come out here to uh, uh, Plinking Range and uh, there'll be targets set up so that you can uh, check the zero on your rifle, make sure that everything's hunky-dory. And then about 10 minutes before the competition starts, you will have a safety brief. Now, as far as I'm aware, in all HFT rules and all HFT comps, um, attendance at the safety brief is compulsory. You must be at the safety brief and listen to the safety brief in order to take part in the competition. So all the, uh, the main points of air gun safety will be carried, in, carried out in that brief. Um, and. Um, You'll be made aware of any peculiarities on the course or any, uh, any unusual things that you might encounter. And then off to your starting peg uh, and waiting for a single blast of the whistle in order to start shooting. So that's a sort of basic uh, overview. What we're going to do now is uh, we're going to wander through the woods and have a look at a course. The course has been set up here for um, the next shoot. It's actually a practice shoot so it's, it won't necessarily uh, stick rigidly to uh, any set of rules uh, but provides an opportunity for um, HFT shooters to practice their skills. So let's go and have a look shall we? Let's head off into the woods then. We're going to check out peg one. Now one thing that I didn't mention was that uh, normally you shoot in pairs, sometimes in threes, so you don't shoot alone, so you've got somebody to uh, score your scorecard. Okay, so here we are at peg one. You can see that you've got the peg denoted with a number and we've got our um, uh, peg that we must be in contact with when we take the shot. So, with the cuckoo in the background, here we have the, uh, the target at peg one. Um, as you can see, it's in the shape of a beer glass. It's a 20 millimeter kill zone, standing on a pole. And if I zoom out, I would estimate that, uh, that that's in the region of sort of 25 to 30 yards. So that would be a typical sort of medium range shot on a course. So let's move on then and take a look at peg two. Here's peg two then. Um, one thing I didn't mention on peg one, you can see there that there's some uh, orange polypropylene cord, or polypropylene cord I should say, um, that runs from the target faceplate back to the peg. And that allows you to, if you've, when you've successfully knocked the target over, to pull on the cord and reset the target. So one of the things that uh, is essential to do when you first arrive at the peg is to make sure that the target has been reset properly uh, by giving the cord a tug also indicates where the target is that you're uh, you're actually shooting because sometimes if there's 
more than one in the woods you don't want to be shooting the wrong target so this one's not so distant then uh, this looks like this might be 15 millimeter kill and uh, it's it's roughly about three to four yards closer than the last target so I zoom out just about make it out there between the two trees so another sort of medium kill then what we do now is uh, I'll wander a bit further along and we'll find uh, one of the closer kills so moving along up to uh, we'll skip peg three moving along up to peg four then we've got a closer range target you can see this here without me even zooming in. And that's a 20 millimeter target on a bit of pallet against the tree there. Now this is where knowing the rules uh, can help you in your range finding because uh, in the rules it defines uh, the different kill sizes and what ranges they can be set at. And we know by referring to the rules that a 20 millimeter target under UKA HFT rules can be set from eight yards to 30 yards. Whereas a 15 mil target can only be set from 13 yards to 25. So when you get a small target like that, the chances are, if you know those rules, that it's set at less than 15 yards. So normally you would expect to, uh, to see these close 20 millimeter targets from 8 to 13 yards. So that can give you a bit of a clue in your range finding. Now I mentioned in my introduction that uh, some of the shots are taken kneeling or standing. And you can see here as we approach peg 6 there is a sign telling us that this is a stand only shot. And as there's a peg here, this is an unsupported standing shot. And I um, don't know if we can see the, the target from here. It's between those two trees. Uh, and it is a, a round target. So let's have a quick zoom in. So there's the target then, as you can see it's a round circular target. The targets that are used for the, uh, the standing and the kneeling shots, both supported and unsupported, uh, tend to be um, the, the uh, shaped targets um, because the rules specify how much area there needs to be around the keel so that um, it's less easy to uh, score a donut I guess. Um, so mostly it's safe to say that the, um, the standing and kneeling shots will generally be circles, squares, diamonds, that sort of thing. But that's not to say that occasionally you won't have um, um, an animal shaped target or something else. Now the targets that I've shown you so far have all been sort of relatively close to the ground, standing on things on the ground. Uh, but we do get elevated targets and uh, there's a good example here of an elevated target this is peg seven and when I kneel down you could probably follow the line of the orange cable and you can see that the target is up in the V of the tree in the center there let's uh, zoom in on that and see that a bit closer So uh, there you can see it's a small bird target with a small kill. I know from this height it looks obscured by the branch and the leaves but uh, when you're lying prone at the peg uh, you will get a, have a clear view of the target. So that's an elevated target then. Um, let's have a look at a supported 
um, standing target. So moving further along the pegs then we'll skip peg 8 and we'll come up to peg 9 where you'll see that this is conveniently placed, placed post with stand only and the peg number by the post so this is going to be a supported standing shot from this post and uh, looking out along the string line you can see again that uh, as I mentioned before supported stock shots are usually the plain uh, shaped face plates and in this case it's another round uh, plate so there's a better view of that target then one thing that I didn't mention in um, in the rules it specifies for um, unsupported and supported uh, targets uh, what size the kill zone should be and uh, what the the maximum ranges should be um, the minimum range for um, for any target apart from 15 mil on on the course is always eight yards but um, for the previous target we saw the unsupported stander uh, they always have to be 35 millimeter targets and uh, their maximum range can be 35 yards this being a supported stander if it's a 25mm kill it can go out to 30 yards and if it's a 35mm kill it can go out to 35 yards. So stress again these are the rules for UKA HFT and uh, the rules for the HFT you shoot may be slightly different to that. So moving on then we'll skip peg 10 We'll head up to peg 11, which is another short range shot. You can see there that we have a squirrel on a little bit of pallet staked down there. That looks from here like a 15mm kill, which would mean, if we refer to the rules, that that can't be closer than 13 yards. So again, that gives you um, a bit of a clue for your range finding. Then we'll move up. I want to look at um, a long range target, a longer range target. This is peg 12. And here we have what we call a lollipop target, right at the back end of the woods. Uh, we call them lollipop targets, whereas you'll see, uh, well, you'll see the reason why when I zoom in on, on it in a minute. So let's zoom in on this lollipop then. You can see why we call it a lollipop. There you go. Pretty obvious really. And uh, this is an example of a longer range target. This is to the back of the woods. So this is going to be in the order of 40 to 45 yards. With 45 yards being the maximum range that we shoot. Uh, under the UKA HFT rules, probably going to be similar. Uh, you may find that, uh, I don't know of any rules that do, but you may find that you go out to 50 yards. I wouldn't think that um, anywhere would shoot much further than that. Okay, so moving up to the edge of the woods, we're skipping peg 13. I just want to go outside to show you how things can vary because once you've got to grip with how the wind affects your pellet in the woods then you come out in the open uh, where obviously depending on direction the wind's going to have a greater effect and we're here at peg 14 where we have a target you can see just up at the top of the scaffold pole which again is a small circular target with a very small plate so the chances of missing that on a strong wind are fairly high so again you've got to be quite skillful not only judging the distance but uh, trying to judge the wind as well both inside and out of the woods 
uh, on our courses here at Cambridge, when this field, uh, when the crop's been harvested on this field, we can also put targets out in the field. So we tend to have half the course in the woods and half the course out in the fields, which uh, does challenge uh, shooters quite a bit. Uh, but at the moment we're using two woods, so we have 15 in the top wood and 15 targets in the bottom wood. So, there we go, back in the, back in the shade. So that's, uh, that's our walk through the woods then. Hope you found that interesting. One thing that uh, I just realised that I haven't covered is, uh, is the classes that uh, you may find available in the different competitions. So we'll go through them then. Um, open class, basically open to anybody uh, with any type of um, uh, air, air rifle, either uh, recoiling or PCP 177 or 22, that's why it's, it's open. Then we have a recoiling class which is just for uh, spring powered air guns. We have a 22 class which is just for 22 calibre air guns, that can be either recoiling or PCP. We have a VETS class for uh, shooters who are over 60 years of age. There's a junior class, there's a ladies class. And the newest class of all is the sticks class. We found in the um, within the HFT community that um, some shooters, as they get older, find it a bit more difficult to get up and down from the prone position. So we've introduced the class so that they can carry on shooting, uh, but not just open to them. Anybody can use it, and that's the sticks class, where you use shooting sticks on every peg. To, uh, uh, to address the targets. So there we have it. Um, if you'd uh, like to read into the rules further, I, as a good example of uh, um, common uh, HFT rules, I will put a link in the description below to the UK HFT rules, so you can download those and have a look. There's, uh, there's a lot of information in there. There's photographs of the correct technique for for kneeling and standing shots um, and it gives you all of the um, uh, data on kill sizes and ranges and that sort of thing uh, and there's uh, a lot of important safety information um, in that document as well so um, have a look at that but uh, for now I hope you've enjoyed this video don't forget if you found it useful please uh, like share and subscribe it's totally free it doesn't cost you a cent or a penny and uh, it really does help the channel because uh, it does promote the channel to other prospective um, shooters and subscribers on YouTube. So thanks very much and I'll see you in the next one.